Okay, we are all here, or we have a quorum here, so I will call the uh, meeting to order. And we have a number of uh, members uh, participating remotely, so I'll ask uh, you to uh, identify yourselves. Jude, do you want to start? And you're muted. <laughs> Still muted. So that I know who I'm seeing is Jude Newman, a member of the Board of Civil Authority. And Ron, do you want to try? Sure. <clears throat> Ron Wild from uh, beautiful downtown St. Paul Street. All right. <clears throat> All right, Jude Newman. Ah, uh, there we go. Excellent. Uh, so we have um, the agenda, the approval of the agenda, and we have uh, a list a list of people who are have uh, requested abatements. Um, I'll ask the clerk. As far as you know, are all of these still uh, live requests? Yes. As far okay. as okay. So I'll assume that uh, the agenda is approved with um, all of these agenda re requests or abatement requests in this order. Do you need and a motion, so, Jack? No, I can just say it's deemed approved, assuming that nobody has is, uh, is objected. Um, and so we'll begin, start with the abatement hearings, beginning with Capital Plaza Corporation. And is someone here from Capitol Plaza? Okay, we'll, we'll skip over that for now. Emily Gould. I don't see Emily. John McCann, you're up. I'm here. Okay, step right up to the end. Right in the front seat here? Right in the end there, yep. The hot seat. Yes, and I'll ask you to raise your right hand. You solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out on another beautiful evening. I know some of you were here when I testified a couple weeks ago or three weeks ago, uh, and some of you haven't, so you may not have heard of my story. Um, if not, please ask some questions if you have some when I read this letter to you. So um, when I was here last time and we went through it, um, I think it was uh, Adrian Gell who asked me to write a letter, um, kind of addressing why the inability to pay our property taxes and um, water and sewer bill for last season. So I'm just gonna dive right in and read my letter to you. And then I'll take questions at the end if, if need be. So uh, dear council members, uh, during last the last abatement hearing, I shared with you our personal struggles with COVID-19, Kate's cancer diagnosis, and the two natural disasters which occurred in our vineyard. Each of these three events took a toll on our business and the ability to pay last year's property taxes and water sewer bill. You asked me at the last meeting to write you this letter, but I'm still a little unclear of what exactly you were asking. I hope that I can provide some more information here to address your concerns. I'm looking to have last year's property taxes and water sewer waived due to all three events that I shared with you, but the two natural disasters in our vineyard push us beyond the limit to pay because of the substantial loss in income due to property damage. However, the issue was that our vineyard is in, located in Middlesex, not in Montpelier. So the abatement due to property damage did not meet your requirements, even though our business is located in Montpelier where we process our grapes and make wine. 
What was determined in the hearing was that I am in a situation where I have the inability to pay our property taxes and water sewer bill to the loss of income, not loss of property. During that hearing, I testified that we lost 40,000 pounds of grapes and a $317,000 in value added wine. Our business took an $18,202 loss in 2023. Since Kate became a state representative, she has had a 25% cut in salary at U32 because she only teaches 75% of the time. The marginal pay that representatives get is not enough to make up the difference. Most recently, and this is kind of something new that I, I'm sharing with you tonight that I didn't share with you last time, our 19 year old daughter moved back home uh, with her new baby, Dante. She got married and dropped out of college. We could no longer claim her as an independent and we could not claim the child tax credit. Unfortunately, she is separated now from her husband and is considered low income and is on WIC and she just applied for three squares. Casey will use the three squares to help with the groceries for our family. Kate just recently applied for a fellowship, and, she, and if she is considered for the job, she will be working four jobs to support our family. I am looking for a part-time job post-harvest to also contribute to our family. Our adjusted gross income for 2023 was $67,447. We do not have a 401k to tap into, and we pay roughly $1,800 a month for our mortgage. I was able to pay the most recent property tax bill of $2,700, which is about $1,000 more per quarter than last year due to the tax rate increase. Again, I hope I've answered all your questions and hope you consider waiving our past due property tax and water sewer bill. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ron. Uh, thank you, hi, John. I have a question hey, per perhaps for Bev, perhaps for uh, John, uh, given given that uh, professed inability to be able to pay the taxes is one of the criteria that's that one can appeal on, what difference does it make where the source of that income is? If someone was working in Burlington and the company went bankrupt or out of business or they lost their job, and as a result they're unable to afford the taxes. Does it matter that they live in Montpelier and their job was in Burlington? I, I don't understand the significance of the fact that the the property that was damaged is in Middlesex. He's still representing a loss of income. Well, the difference is that those are two different criteria and one applies and one doesn't. The criteria of damage to property refers to damage within the town. But law, but the loss of income then is a separate criteria, which is ability to pay, and that certainly isn't going to that that's certainly going to be regardless of where somebody works or where their income comes from. But, but we can't abate for damaged property that is not on our tax rolls. But, but his application his application is for inability to pay. That's correct. And that was that was part of what we had to come to understand last time is that the application, the initial application couldn't be for loss of property outside of our grand list. But uh, that's why it's been adjusted, I think, to ability to pay. Thank you. But the, but the application, the request, as it was originally filed on May 30th, checked off the box for real or personal property lost or destroyed during the tax year. I see. <clears throat> but I think you're absolutely right, Ron. Any other questions from members of the board? Just to clarify that, that may have been an error on my part uh, because people were coming in requesting um, flood and I probably handed him one, not many, uh, one other person. I actually think it was Kate who talked to John. Oh, and John yeah. gave it to Kate. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so you're off the hook. Then. But I may have seen the problem now. Okay. Well, there. Mary, Mary Mintel. John, in your letter, so thank you for 
coming back. Trying to clarify. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in your letter, you say that your 23 uh, adjusted gross income was 67,447. And that's all of you. That is your income tax. Do you have a uh, business income? Is that is your the business, business income, income was an eighteen thousand two hundred two loss. loss? Yeah. Okay. So that's where the adjusted income of the sixty seven comes from. Okay. So there's not a separate, and you don't have you didn't have a million dollars. I wish I did. <laughs> of which was down eighteen. No. No. Okay. So this is the total income. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, just a clarification, John, the three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars is the value of the grades that were unable to be right. So so according to um, the federal government and and the FSA, um, which we applied for when this damage happened, um, <clears throat> they only look at what the grapes are worth because unfortunately they look as it, at us the same way they look at somebody who grows potatoes or grows tomatoes right that harvest comes in well you're just the difference is yeah. you plant tomatoes and potatoes every year grapevines get only get planted once and they last 30 to 50 years depending on um, so they look at us as a tomato farmer and that the value of that tomato being sold on the market. If somebody wanted to take that tomato and make it into wine, it's a different value. But there was no wine inventory loss. There is a wine inventory right. loss because there's no grapes to be No, but I mean, there was made. no bottle of wine. No bottle of wine to be lost, okay. no. But so to clarify, what you're saying is that the $317,000 is what the wine would have been worth Correct. If you've been able to harvest the grapes and turn it into wine. Correct. Gotcha. Anyone else have any questions? Can I understand the grapes were destroyed? The grapes were, so I, I don't think you were here the last time, and I'll, I'll kind of give you a quick synopsis. So in 2023, we had two natural disasters. On May 18th, we had not a frost, but a freeze. It dropped to 25 degrees. And we already had shoots that were um, a two to three inches tall. So it, it killed every shoot. But what it also did was because of the cold weather was so severe at such an early time that it damaged the entire trunk of the grapevine and killed that vine all the way back to the ground. So it took us all year last year to retrain them back to the top wire. So we we didn't get, and, and, and when I say it, again, we lost 80% to that freeze. Then we had a, the additional 20% that survived because our vineyard is on a slope and it's due south. So the upper part of the vineyard, the, the frost and the freeze slid down, killed everything below, but survived up top. That remaining 20% during the huge July and August and, and during the flood season, um, we weren't able to maintain our grapes the way we should, and everything rotted on the vine. So we weren't able to harvest a single grape last year. And as you, as you see, uh, um, this, this isn't a continuing inability to pay. This is based on the disasters that happened last year. Correct. As I stated in my letter, um, I was able to pay this first quarter of my tax, property taxes. Um, we are on the upswing. Um, our, what we call our festival season is just beginning. So September, October, November, December are huge months. We actually make 75% of our income in those four months alone. Um, and then in January, we go dormant again until the following May. This is sort of irrelevant. I'm just sort of curious. Have you made an attempt yet to get uh, a real estate abatement from Berlin? We're not in Berlin. Middlesex. We're in Middlesex. I mean, Middlesex, sorry. Um, 
No, I didn't even know that was a possibility. So well, that's uh, that's where your property that was damaged was. So you should look into that. I will talk to Sarah Merriman yeah. about that. Um, any other questions? From but I should say, John, um, we didn't have any property tax due in that town because we just purchased that land in 2023. Oh. So our taxes didn't come due until just 10 days ago. Nothing to abate. Nothing to abate. Uh, <laughs> anyone else, anything else from anyone on the board? Could you clarify what you were asking for? I, so Bev has some numbers that she put together. He's asking for the balance of the delinquent taxes, which is on that sheet I gave you. Yeah. So he's asking for the balance on the, the actual tax balance of three thousand eight sixty three twenty five for last year. He paid the first ones and then told me the second ones after the flood. The delinquent. The penalty amount is three hundred five, uh, which is. Yeah, Paul Joanning once told me if you abate the taxes, those automatically go away, but yep. this makes it clearer. Um, so he's asking for the tax amount, the penalties, and the interest for a total of $4,340,334.92, which you can see is the delinquent balance still due and owing on last year. Okay. And you're not and, oh, excuse me. And then on the water and sewer. This is the delinquent bill for last year. And he has always said to me that he will have a taxes to show his ability to pay this year. And he will have a check September um, 15th to pay the current taxes. So he's only looking for the delinquent amount. And again, um, he's already paid the first installment of this year. We allowed it to be applied first just to make it easier for our. Okay. So what's the actual amount of utilities? Uh, okay, so for um, the water and sewer total is $4,334.92. The actual amount due um, by September 15th for delinquent taxes, uh, delinquent water and sewer is $3,548.46. He's not looking to update the current yeah. sewer water charges. Nope, he said he's got the money for that. Can somebody add, do the math and say what exactly is the yeah? yeah. Anybody have a calculator? So, it's, so you're requesting yeah, it's a calculator. to pay your taxes and the yeah. water yeah. that's yeah. so only yeah. $7,800.38. Say it louder, please. Yeah, louder. 7883 and 38 cents. We add those two numbers together. Is there a third number, though? No, he's, he's got it right. So okay. 7883. Is there a motion? <laughs> Are we uh, so the, you're looking for a motion? Just to be clear, those numbers are property tax and utility, water and sewer, correct? The yes. combined number. And you're looking for a motion to um, recommend abatement for the amount of seven thousand eight hundred and eighty-three dollars and thirty-eight cents, or whatever anyone wants to move. But yep. I'll move that. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Aye. Thanks, John. Do you want to reset? point out that um, this season? has not been as fruitful as we hoped, but we are going to get a harvest starting Saturday. <laughs> so if anybody wants to come by and see what a vineyard looks like with some grapes growing on it, we'd be happy to have you. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. This Thanks is, for coming This in, is huge. Have a good evening. You too. And Tim, I'll be talking to you later.
Okay, Lisa, you're up. And I'll ask you to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. All right, you're on. Hi, Elisa. Most of you have long since heard the story way more times than you want to. Um, I'm 195 State Street, down in sort of lower State Street, just before you get to the cemetery. Um, as lots of you know, our whole first floor was destroyed. It was over the countertops on the first floor. We had done, the prior owners had done all sorts of remediation after the storm before Irene. Um, our utilities were raised. All of that really worked. It was super successful, both during Irene and during this flood. But this time the waters were so much higher where we were that it was countertop height. So we've lost our whole first floor. We're totally gutted. Um, one of the biggest losses for us is that we have an absolutely gorgeous two bedroom, 1200 square foot apartment that we've always rented below normal cost, but at absolute minimum at this point, we're looking at losing, you know, it's fully furnished, it's fully inclusive, it's fully private, it's two bedrooms, it has everything, including your washer, dryer, dishwasher. I mean, conservatively, we're losing 20,000 a year. Um, we are unfortunately not very likely going to be raising our house. We're looking to elevate our house, um, I guess I should say. We also received a substantial damages letter from the city saying that our house is beyond 50% damaged. We are required by law to raise it two feet above base minimum, which at minimum is seven feet for a 3,700 square foot home. It actually is remarkably doable. We're really hoping to do it. It's much more cost affordable than you would think in comparison to rebuilding. We're in the process of doing this. We're still looking at two to three years. So right now, if you walked in our house, no kitchen, no bathroom, we're cleared to the studs. We have gorgeous subfloors. We have insulation and drywall, but like the drywall is not taped. It is not mudded. We are pulled to the studs everywhere else. And that's where we sit now for the next, at least the next year. So what we're asking is to have the taxes abated. We're paying all of our utilities and our water and all of that. My boys and I have two boys that are in, in high school in Montpelier, which is a big part of why we're here. We are living in it the way it is. It isn't, it's, you have to have a sense of humor. It's very open concept, um, but it's remarkably livable for being really terrible. And we're there and we're gonna raise it, but we're asking to have the taxes abated for another year because of the massive losses across the boards and most concretely the losses because we really can't be renting the apartment. I'm not going to go into, for because most of you have already heard it, I'm not gonna go into the details on why the apartment wasn't rented, but able to be rented. If somebody wants that, I'd be glad to do it. I've done it enough times that I don't wanna waste your time on that piece. It sounds kind of nuts that over a year, it didn't make sense to rent it. It really didn't with all the different pieces and it's not looking like it's particularly viable anytime soon. Thanks Lisa. And the standard we established was that everyone who got, if you got substantially damaged, we just get their taxes abated, right, in full. Yeah. So I would entertain <laughs> so a motion. Sorry. I would entertain a motion to do that. Do you all want the same language that was used for Ed? Yeah. yeah. But weren't those homes that were not living in them? We don't have a choice. Living we're living in it. But we also didn't get anything for FEMA. We didn't get rental assistance. We didn't get somewhere else to live. We pay our mortgage and our flood insurance and our homeowners every month, even though the flood insurance I paid for the last year would pay out at zero if we flooded again, because none of it's been rebuilt. We're literally to the studs. We have no ceilings. We have no kitchen. I'm cooking on the grill. Actually, I do, you guys, a lot of you know, about two weeks ago, I got a kitchen stove and we cut that plywood and we slid it in. So that's an improvement, but still. But, still. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's a huge hit um, for the two year period. And last year alone, the losses just on the apartment are over 20,000. Do you get help from FEMA for raising 
It has not happened yet. It is the most convoluted, horrible process I've ever seen. The quick version is our insurance paid out at just over half. We had national flood insurance. So our policy paid at half. None of that covers any of the elevation work, which is required because our city is part of the FEMA program. Um, I mean, this is one of those where we really got caught between everything. We have all the insurance and we've received nothing. No rental assistance, no support. We didn't get case management. Nobody has done, I mean, in terms of any kind of supports or anything else, a big zero. We're $40,000 in to dry it out enough and stop the mold and put up insulation so that we could live there last year when the trailers never came. Mary, I think I saw you raising your hand. I, I just wanted to be sure that I understood that the reason you're not rebuilding now, if I, I'm assuming, is because you've got to raise it and you're waiting, waiting to raise it. We can't. We yeah, we what we've been told over and over is we can't. That's why the drywall isn't mudded or taped and why we haven't rebuilt. Yeah. We have the insurance money, what, what we've gotten of it. We have a massive, we have a giant SBA loan sitting in cash in an account, and we can do nothing until the building's elevated. But we've had to wait for all the different processes of are we going to be allowed to elevate it or are we going to be condemned? Over and over for this year, we have never known at what point they might say, you know what, eminent domain, we're taking it, we're turning it into floodplains. We have not, any money we put in, we might get back in a buyout, but it's not a guarantee. You're not guarantee a buyout. So any cent we spent came out of our pocket. Yeah. yeah, it's been a really horrific year, which we haven't been allowed to move forward. Despite a lot of effort by a lot of people at the city and the state, this is the most horrific government. It, it's, I'm not a conspiracy person. This is the most horrific handling of anything I've ever seen. The flood wasn't the trauma. And, and so your the request is to abate past taxes? No, the past taxes, taxes were already abated are, last year because okay. we flooded on the 10th of July. So we lost all of last year. And so when we received the substantially damaged letter, we were able to come to this committee and present that letter from the city. And across the boards, anyone with that letter, it was abated. And my understanding was that the hope this year was that it would be the same thing. Because so the, it, those is for the current taxes. Correct. Thank you. So are the state taxes for the current year? We're talking about the current tax year. The treatment tax for the state is covering the, the uh, state part. But what about this year? So if we obey, we're obeying the whole bill. Yeah. Do you know the answer to that? I, I would say I haven't discussed this with Sarah, but that's my understanding. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to clarify that. So I think we should do it. And I will move that. Okay. Moved by Sal. Is there a second? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, there you are. Thanks for coming in, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, Evan Richards. Don't see Evan Richards. Um, Aiden Swift, I do see you. All right, why don't you unmute yourself and raise your right hand. You saw the firm subject to the pains and penalties of perjury. The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, thank you. Um, why don't you tell us what your story is? Well, I'm glad Lisa went first. She said a lot for us substantially damaged homes. Um, I live at 127 Elm Street, um, and I had 32 inches of water in the first floor of the home in the 2023 flood in July, um, which required gutting the whole first floor, and it still sits gutted. Um, I also was renting the upstairs apartment and has lost have lost that income. Um, 
And I, so since receiving so much water, flood water, it's got the letter of substantial damage. Um, and I, um, I'm on the buyout list and also on the elevation possibly, um, waiting to see what happens I'm just waiting to see what what the process is like. Like Lisa said, um, I'm waiting to see what happens with her, if it's even a possibility. It's probably, unfortunately, going to need to do the buyout. Um, I really don't want to tear the house down, um, but the whole process of elevating um, sounds long and hard, um, and then to have to fix it after that without enough flood insurance money to probably cover the cost of the damage to fix the home up. Um, it has no furnace system in it right now. There's electricity in there. Um, so again, it, yeah, the, is it possible to rent it the upstairs? I don't, I don't know who would want to rent. It'd be a very expensive electric heat to rent it. Um, I am a teacher in town here. And so it's just my income and, um, I haven't heard from FEMA since April and gotten any rental assistance money. So this month, I actually am not sure how I'm paying mortgage or rent. Um, um, I had a case manager over at um, Capstone and she left the position. I haven't heard again and they were supposed to be helping with FEMA and I haven't heard anything from that. Um, so that's my situation. So the house, yeah, sits there. Sadly, with some chickens out front. <laughs> so the same um, thing, essentially uninhabitable and rated as uh, substantially damaged by the city. Yeah, it and if the basement flooded again, another three, four feet in December, and then again in July. Yeah. So it's flooded three times. Okay. Any questions for any members of the board? or a motion are there amounts to make a motion on um i could pull it up it's basically the same situation as the last one so you could just move so you just want a, a motion moving to abate the property taxes um at 127 elm street yeah that's, yeah. that's fine so moved exactly this year's bill yeah for 20 the current tax year and is there a second second any discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 any opposed okay david you're set thank you thank you very much everyone Catherine Tan, I do see you. Hi, I'm Catherine Tan. Sorry. You solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, thank you. Why don't you Thanks. tell us? I'm also, I was also impacted by the flood, um, and I also, uh, the house that I own is on 309 State Street, and uh, yeah, I had to also gut the property um, when we did the cleanup. So the first floor, pretty much, you see straight through the house. Um, I'm not quite sure. I was planning to elevate it, but then this month, I was told that uh, there were some increases, and I just I couldn't. It was like two weeks before we were going to start, and then. I couldn't come up with the extra money. So it was not a possibility. And then I had some additional personal bad news. So I guess in a way it was good that I couldn't go through with that, uh, with the increase of the of the cost. Um, so I'm actually not sure what I'm gonna do. I really wanted to save the house. And, but at this point I, I'm, uh, I wrote to, uh, Mike and Josh to see about uh, potentially, uh, well, to uh, see about the buyout. I don't know. And still, there's a small chance that maybe I can uh, still do the elevation, but I'm not sure. That's going to 
I feel like I'm going to need some time to figure that out. So probably in the next, hopefully nine to 12 months, I can see how things go for me to see if I can potentially save the house. But okay, I okay. also received a substantially damaged letter. But... Yep. Anybody have any questions? Oh, sorry. We have a motion to uh, fully abate the taxes for for this property. So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? The only question I have there is the testimony is maybe something else is possible within the next year. And I, it sounds like expecting a miracle. But <laughs> if a miracle happened, then you know they were she was able to be back in and using the property fully at some point during the tax year should we be abating the taxes for when she's once again able to use the property that, that mm -hmm. honestly feels like some wishful thinking and, and i can let that go but seems like it should be a standard line at all the letters for these abatements right but uh, i mean it's unlikely that any of them back online but it could happen i guess in which case we, we would just rescind just, the, no. a portion of the abatement. Right. Uh, that's a rescinding an abatement. Yeah. Sounds yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, that gets a little tricky. Yeah, I think it's much more about the board's standard and precedent. Okay. Um, but I don't think you can rescind an abatement. That's basically slapping a new tax bill on somebody. Oh, that's a good question. It's a, could so it be could subject we, to a, a motion to reopen? Well, we could do two quarters or, you know, one quarter or three quarters. We don't have to do the whole year because we think there's a possibility that house we have it fill again. But we didn't do that for any of the others. So, right. yeah. yeah. I feel like we should just reopen the same. Yeah. It goes more than uh, this tax year, maybe we should. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if we go next, if we're do, done with this next year, which I, Predict we still will be. Um, for some of these people, it, that might be more the time to do that. Well, there'll be a huge group of our values also. I mean, I assume they would be reappraised at that point. Yeah. They're uninhabitable. So, so, whatever shape they're in April 1st is what you're assessing that, right? Yeah, these have already been lowered. Okay, are we ready to vote on this one? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Catherine, you are set and you've got your abatement. Thank you. Welcome. Gets us to T, M, and D. Yes. Um, the city discovered when we started working uh, with Mr. Kilmurray about the um, property at 72 Main Street here at Mad at Westmont Bill. Mad Taco was saying that he's the only record that they were paying the only post about paying the bill when they no longer had a business to run. But he paid the total that I sent on a delinquent tax notice. And in working with them, realized that that whole total, they were current at the time of the flood. And the whole bill was all estimated. And of course, they weren't in there. And uh, the billing cycle, when nobody pays, uh, or when somebody, but we can't get a reading, is what I want to say. Mm -hmm. When we can't get a reading, the billing clerk goes back four or five cycles at the same time of the year to see what they used and then send them a bill for estimated. But she did not realize that the building was not inhabitable or usable at all. And so technically, he's entitled to do what we do for others um, without going through abatement. We will adjust the bill um, back to ready to serve fees. And um, the billing cycles that he paid for already. 
and he will be entitled to a refund the difference between the ready to serve fee and what the estimated bill was for each of those quarters. And um, we're still working on that adjustment, but he has agreed that at any time the city is ready to go in and meet the meter, which we probably, based on what he's telling us, um, that um, we might get a good reading come um, the end of um, uh, September. End of September, we'll be, we're three months behind in billing all this. So the September bill would cover the um, uh, April, May, and June. It will be billed the 1st of August through September mm -hmm. uh, 15th. And then, um, so we can do it all through an adjustment without requiring an abatement. Okay. Fine. So we can consider this to be being settled. Settled. Okay. Great. Yeah, that was, that was a little complicated, so that was helpful. And Michelle was first. And I thought I saw Michelle on the screen earlier. She was. She was. Yeah, she came in today and instructed her how to do it. Yeah, she was on here and now she's not. That's when I for her to come back. Yeah. Okay. So now we have um, a handful of people who who didn't come in tonight. Um, Capital Plaza, Emily Gould, Evan Richards, um, and oh, there's this, there's a note in chat. Let's see what this says. It's I need from, to leave. That's from Michelle it's saying, she, saying she had to leave. Yeah. Yep. Michelle came in and met with John and I today. I don't know and uh, Bev, do you know the uh, what the story is about the personal property tax from Emily Gould? Um, it looks like it's one of these things where she where didn't she file. Forgot to file or file late. Mm -hmm. right. She has she operated out of her home on Lincoln Street. Has has filed in the past, and this year she's not there. <laughs> Sorry. I Should just said you? she's not there. I don't understand why we're reviewing her case. She's not. I see. Um, yep, that's because I was thinking that we would uh, we can, we can still take action do something. Her. We could take action and be efficient and save coming back later on this if, if people wanted to, but we don't need to do that. And so this is the yeah. The yeah, applicants are told they do not have to appear. I think in right. I'm pretty sure Evan Richards is one of the ones I told that, but I strongly encourage people to. Appear. I know you strongly encourage, <laughs> yeah. but I think somewhere it's printed, you do not have to be present right. to okay. have your case considered. Okay. Well, with Emily Gould, it's one of these things where the uh, person is told to file their. Uh, personal property tax return. And if they do not, the city automatically bumps the value of the personal property up to $10,000, uh, regardless of what the person's actual personal property might be worth. And so this is one where she filed saying, my personal property is actually worth $762, not $10,000. And if it's worth worth seven hundred sixty two dollars, there's no tax to do on, right? So we I, could. I believe what um, the uh, ministry of assistant has has told me is that is the exact story. It was just a late file. Yep. So does anyone feel like we should just make a motion to? Grant this abatement, or do you want to take some other action? I move. 
Yeah. Emily, Gould, yeah. Emily Gould. Gould. It's the, it's the personal property one. It was mailed and it was never recorded. Uh, the claim is not that it was late, but that it was lost, I guess. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the yeah. claim. Yeah. So, Mary, you. So, I, I would make a motion that, that we accept that the value of the personal property is less than 10000 and so no tax should be applied. Any further discussion? Uh, just to for the benefit of others, uh, such as. Yeah, we can't find the paperwork. Yeah. The, the amount we're talking about is ninety-three dollars and ninety-two cents. Oh well, we just spend the rest of the night, right? yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Can you oppose? Okay. Um. And um, I yeah. assume you could. Do Michelle Winthrop the same same way? I imagine she's putting her information that I can give all of you and um, so that you want to consider it without requiring her to be here. It's pretty self evident. Okay, well, first, I suggest the Capitol Plaza, We it was so unclear and confused last time that I don't feel like we can take action on that one without it being here. Yeah. I I disagree. Okay. I would like to move that we deny the abatement request from Capitol Plaza. I'd like to point something down on that too. Capitol Plaza. Um, they're sitting on a half a million dollars worth of permits right now of uh, work that they're planning to do to the property. Um, the, six, the sixth floor of the building has been vacant for a while and they're going to turn that into uh, hotel rooms. Um, I think if they have the money to put into the building, I think they have money for taxes. Okay, Ron. Um, and as far as adjusting the value, I don't, I don't see any reason to do that without a commercial appraisal. Okay, uh, Ron. Uh, I'm leaning more toward setting aside till they have a chance to come in and argue their case. Um, it is their paperwork is a little convoluted and it is a little complicated and they're asking for abatement, but they're also asking that their uh, tax appraisal be rolled back several years. So, I mean, there's a lot there. Um, it doesn't cost us anything to give them another chance to come in and speak to it. So my, my sense would be to postpone rather than outright deny. Okay. Carrie. Oh, well, John, had something. did you want to... No, um, just that I think when we're talking the fourth quarter, I, I think it's a little different than the first three. I think it sort of behooves us to step back and take a look at the entire year and what we've done for the entire year for folks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the only folks that we've given just a flat blanket abatement for everything are the substantially damaged ones. I think there's an argument to be made just looking at it stepping back that three quarters of the tax year is is a significant amount and is uh you know may well be enough just on its own yeah um so i i agree with that i don't I think haven't told anybody else that they can have the entire year abated unless they were the substantially damaged category and they are up and running and they they do, they, they're going. This this is the third time we've seen this in front of us, I think. And so I don't feel like I need any more information. Um, I feel that this is an extremely large company. They own many, many hotels, many properties. And and I, I don't feel they've made the case that they are unable to pay their taxes. And that's, so that's, I'm willing, I'm ready to, to say no, we haven't made that case, so. So before we go any farther, does somebody want to second Carrie's motion? Oh, okay. So it's moved and seconded. Tim. So we did give an abatement for last year's taxes after the flood, right? For all the, yeah. all the time yeah. they were closed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we did. Yeah. 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 Not the whole year, though. Three, no, three, 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 three quarters. Three quarters. Three quarters. Three. And they were open by April 1st because they opened for um, right. the eclipse. The eclipse. Yep. And that fourth payment in May covers April, May, and June. 
Mm -hmm. So they were operating at least partially by that time. Okay. Mary. I thought that we were fairly clear the last time they were in about what sort of information we were looking for. Yeah. I, I almost called John and said, where is it? I mean, surely they provided, and I was thinking about the degree of detailed information we've seen from some people who have many fewer resources to develop that. And it strikes me that they've had an opportunity to make a good argument on for why they should have their taxes further abated, and, and they haven't made it. And if they want to come back and talk to us again in the future about, well, it's a different process, but they have other avenues for addressing the other concerns that they raised in their letter. And I, I'm just really disinclined to be sympathetic to this. If, if they had given us the information we'd asked for, then we could have had a conversation that they didn't. Mm -hmm. They also they also have not paid a cent on water or sewer since they purchased the building. Uh, and also, they also own the Airy Street um, property. There's been no taxes or water or sewer bills paid on that since they purchased the property. Is that right? That's the laundromat? Yeah. They're not paying the water or sewer. Oh, but they're not on the water and the sewer. Well, there is a well. sewer. Sewer, but not water. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, it's a lot of sewer usage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 and, and so there's um, a couple of water and sewer bills. Uh, I, I say water and sewer bills, it's been full as a unit, but anyway, the utility billing that the city does has there have been no payments on either the um, the hotel property or the laundromat property for taxes. And well, they made it the first three quarters on the hotel only because they didn't have flood damage. Mm -hmm. And then um, they also have not paid, which are much smaller bills. Um, I was hoping it was going to be there. It was going to be there. So they come say they don't get the ones we're mailing, they don't come back. Um, they um, haven't paid the personal property taxes on. Either property, the for pro, uh, personal property that's located within, like on the laundromat, the, the machine, the machines, things yeah. like that. And I think they must still be working and providing income. So it is, um, like I said, it's a, it's a major hit to the, to the city. And there's been no effort to contact me. I've tried, you know, calling them. And They've got to be one of our biggest. Uh water users in the hotel. Yeah, other than the insurance companies. All right, are we ready to vote on Carrie's motion? Yes. To deny the abatement request. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm going to say that this conversation. Okay, that's denied. Thank you. They clear an essence that you start paying their bills. <laughs> okay, now. What's one more? Like I said, the, the initial paperwork said that they did not have to appear, but John has highly recommended it to everybody individually. Uh, and he did to Michelle, and she didn't ask them today for the Zoom, but. Um, Technically, what she is asking for is she bought this property. It was a, a divorce situation. Um, she, the divorce, um, was able to buy a condo um, up on Korean Drive, but has been unable. Um, she bought that in the middle of last year's um, taxes. The first two installments of last year's taxes were paid by the former owner. Um, and um, she was unable to pay the February or May taxes. And she said she was also unable to pay her taxes this year. I think maybe out of scheduling and then um, you know, she's, I don't know if it's proper for me to testify what she wants to do. I think that 
might be a lot of questions because we want to read some of these and a yeah. little more information would be helpful. So I think organization needs to come in. And, and she tried. She was yeah. here earlier, yeah. and yeah. who knows why she right. had to yeah. leave. But I, I'm inclined to say we should have her, invite her to come back in. Yeah. yeah. You may still get more big requests. Oh, yeah. So they continue to yeah. get calls that mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's one I'm definitely expecting that's coming. So I will have to do this again. And, and, and see, my 35 questions with the city, yeah. I have seen the process that has required so much out of the Yep. And uh, Kath and Evan Richards. Sorry, Mary. Oh, Mary. Before we move off of uh, Michelle Winthrop, uh, it would be, it, so I agree that we should have some consideration. It would be nice to have this letter know that we would like some additional in, in information. Saying I'm on a fixed income is not a sufficient way to describe what right. the situation right. is. And in particular, there may have been some sort of settlement or some sort of proceeds that she took from her marriage that would help cover these costs. Yep. So right. we need to understand. Yeah, there's no mortgage. There's no mortgage. Oh, oh. That's what she told us today. Yeah. There's no yeah. mortgage. But so yeah. she's sitting on a three hundred thousand dollar asset and can't pay her taxes. But yeah, also, I think we should move a first state payment for this. Well, year. she didn't own it till after the yeah. first. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. oh, I thought it was April first last year. It was April first. Oh, April. Okay, April. Oh, yes. okay, April. Well, so, so she four three twenty three. She bought it, but oh, she doesn't. We asked her about a prebate from the state. Can she file? And she said, I didn't know I had to. She said she's never filed taxes before her and her husband her always. Involved. Well, I think we should move on since there's a lot of confusion around this particular case. I, I agree with you, Jude. I think there's a lot of questions, but we should ask them when she's here. Right. You, you shouldn't be guessing at her situation. Let her know that we want this information so yeah. that we're not fumbling. Yeah. yeah. So, John, you're going to send her a letter. Later. Yeah, we'll get in touch yeah. with her for sure. Okay. There's the financial counsel. And yeah. I had already suggested that she, you know, I was hoping she'd come with more information. And then the one case we have. She's not there, so just let's go on. The one case we haven't dealt with yet is Evan Richards. And I, what do you want to do about him? This is what might, might be straightforward. It, it looks like the house was destroyed in a fire. and has been uninhabitable. And we did what we did before. This one. That's the charts thing. So last week, December 23, and the date for the year 2024. Usually, right, in the past, usually the assessor submits something, looks at it when the charge on the design. Do you know, Marty? This is the first I've heard of it, honestly. I, oh. I didn't know anything about this property. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, but with Elliot Curtin, he was um, he was out of his home for a certain period of time, and his assessment was lowered until he was back into it, and his taxes were abated for the period of time that he was out of the home. What do you think about uh, abating it, abating the, uh, the rest of 2023 and, and the first two quarters of this year? So we're carrying him through December and then he would have to come back. If, if he asked for fourth, no, one-sixth of the fourth quarter of 2023. And all four quarters of 2024. Because it's saying you can't get a contractor until December. That seems fair. 2025, yeah, that's pretty Yeah, can't can't start construction until 2025. He has a figure on his requirements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the figure that's he's requesting is eight thousand two hundred and eighty-nine dollars and seventy cents. 
So I'm uncomfortable without talking to him, doing all that he's asking for. I can imagine doing it if, if we can accept his testimony that he's not living there now. We could abate it to a certain time and then have him come back in, but that may make it too complicated. Alternatively, we just say, come talk to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The piece, is there a standard process that the assessor looks at the property? So we should be a burning? Yeah. Go look at it. Yeah. Well, since Barney didn't know about it, I'm sure he would. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Usually somebody gets to first place, they visit. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm shocked that I. I didn't realize they had the place. No. I'm surprised. So, so, Mary, I think. Let's defer it. I think that you're yeah. good point. Let's defer this one. And that means we're done for that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thanks, folks. We are adjourned at 7:36 p.m.